أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت طيبين الطاحرين سير الحجة فقية الله العظم روحي وأنواهنا له فداء ولعنه دائم على أعدائهم إجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري وأسر لي أمري وحل أغلة من لساني يفقه قولي so our discussions were, were about seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we can benefit and maximize our benefit from this holy month inshallah so we can seek that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our journey towards the Creator. But when it comes to seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person he can ask himself, if I don't want to seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what would the consequences of that be? Our discussion yesterday was about the intention Let's say for, for a person, for example, he doesn't have an intention or he lacks the intention with certain actions. Because we have an understanding that the lack of intention means that there's no intention there. But that's not quite true. The opposite of having an intention to seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is having an intention for something else. And not that the intention doesn't exist. The intention is there, but it's for something else. Whether it's for ourselves, other people, it's for our worldly affairs, it could be different things. But the important point here is that the intention is there and we need to fix it. Why? Because the possibility that that intention is in contrary and in contrast with our intention of seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a high possibility that that's the case. That's why Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was tested, what was he tested with? The most beloved that he had. His son. And what son? Just not, it wasn't some ordinary son. It was the Prophet Ismail salam. Such a beautiful young man. When he was born first, he was told to put him in the desert and leave him alone. Don't even look over your shoulder. Prophet Ibrahim salam, he took <laughs> difficult task, but he did it. Then afterwards, after not seeing Prophet Ismail for years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Ibrahim salam, you can return to your son. He's a young man now. He returns to the desert, he finds this young man, Prophet Ismail salam. The first thing he tells Prophet Ibrahim salam, put him down, put the blade on his neck and sacrifice him. After so many years he hasn't seen his son. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if you want to see closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certain things need to be sacrificed. Allah didn't want to sacrifice what? Prophet Ismail alayhi It wasn't about sacrificing a human being. It was about sacrificing that love and that intention which was in contrast to the intention of seeking closeness to Allah. And he did that. So not having an intention and not seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the opposite of it is not not having anything it is to have something and normally that goes against your journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words it works as a barrier that's why Eid al-Adha Eid al-Adha they say when we celebrate that the Prophet he sacrificed or he sacrificed something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's about finding that which you love and not what you hate everybody can sacrifice what they hate you don't even going to come close to it but sacrifice what you love. In other words, you should prioritize between the different attachments. And Mira Mu'minin in a beautiful narration, he said, an aqil is not the one who can distinguish the good from the bad. Everybody can do that. That's not a difficult task to do. He said, an aqil, an intellectual person is what? The person who can distinguish between two good things. That's an intellectual person, basically. In other words, when you have the ability to distinguish between two good things and you can prioritize when it comes to your attachments, that's where your journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts. When everything is in a continuation of the intention you have in seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything becomes so, so much beautiful 
after that as well. Loving your parents for the sake of Allah becomes much more beautiful than just loving your parents. Because if you don't love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as soon as they say something to you which, which goes against your own will and what you desire, that love is being forgotten then. That's why you see a lot of marriages, they get ruined. Why? Because that, there's a missing link, which is the Creator. They don't love each other for the sake of Allah. They love each other either for the sake of themselves, their own nafs, or for the sake of their partner. So if that partner, sometimes, which will happen, doesn't have any patience and shows some anger, how are you going to react to that? It's not something which is attractive. In other words, you aren't going to love that person anymore. In other words, there, there's a missing link here, which connects you in all circum under every circumstance, all the all, all circumstances that you can think of in any situation that you can think of. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, loving for the sake of Allah holds a greater pleasure than just loving for the sake of that person or that thing that you'll have in lo love to. Therefore, when we talk about seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should practice that as well. In other words, find attachment as a continuation of that attachment and that love that we have for the Creator. Everything becomes much more beautiful in our lives then. Why? Because all the pleasure we can find in worldly affairs is not of their own essence. If it wasn't for the Creator, there wouldn't be no pleasure in these worldly affairs. So the source of the pleasure is also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you understand that when you start practicing that. If we keep looking at things isolated from the existence of God and try to see closeness to everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're only going to meet a wall. We're going to run into a wall every single time. And we're not going to understand what, what, con what the consequences of that were. How did it result in this? And you see depression, sadness, grief. In our countries, Scandinavian countries, we have the best wealth. We don't have any war here. We don't have any poverty. We have the best welfare. There's a study that came out recently in Denmark from the Danish government about the youth that are facing some sort of a sadness, grief and depression. 20% of all the youth of Denmark, 20%, that's one-fifth of the country, of the youth of the country, in a country where there's no war, there's no poverty, you have all the opportunities in life. You have free education, you have free health care, you have everything. From a worldly perspective though. So it's quite clear something's missing here, dear brothers and sisters. And that's what we should be looking for. Not trying to solve the symptoms, but solve the root of the cause. They say when you want to solve an issue, start with the root. The root is... Going towards the creation instead of the Creator. That's the main cause for all these things. And then when you do that, you start to see the rotten lifestyle where people only live superficially. In other words, they live for the creation instead of the Creator. It doesn't become attractive to you anymore. That's why I say Ma'rifatullah. In other words, knowledge which is being practiced and turned into wisdom which we call Ma'rifatullah, you know what it results in? That the blessings you are seeing the creation with, you're not even going to feel attracted to it anymore. Even the blessings and the pleasures of paradise will be, mean nothing to you anymore. The pleasures of paradise. Why are you looking for the creator of the paradise? Not the paradise itself. That's just a hotel for you. When you go ziyara, what do you do? To stay, you go to ziyara to stay at the hotel? Or because you want to do ziyara? You want to meet the Imam? Paradise becomes a hotel for you to meet your Lord. Not because you just want to stay in a hotel, sit there all day. That's not the pleasure itself. The pleasure is actually walking over to the Imam to be able to speak to the Imam. The same applies when it comes to paradise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Paradise is just a hotel for you to stay when you want to meet your Lord. It's not the paradise itself that's important here. But a person only understands that when they start seeking that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or starting their journey towards the Creator. If not, it's not going to happen. They're not going to feel that pleasure and then they think that the pleasure lies within the creation instead of the Creator. You know what happens there? Then you go to the extremes. Because they will never satisfy you or they will never meet your needs either. 
Who understands the pleasure of resting? A person who's sitting in his couch all day, 24-7? Or a person who's active? It's not a rhetorical question, dear brothers. Who understands it? Who understands the pleasure of eating the person who's fasting or the person who's overeating every day? The person who's fasting. In other words, when you have a balance in your life, and that balance comes in your journey towards the Creator, that's exactly what He gives. In other words, you, you learn to prioritize. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a lot of the things that are haram, or what we call haram pleasures, they are haram because if you want that deep pleasure in life, that you're going to experience while seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not compatible with those superficial types of pleasures. It's not because God doesn't want you to have pleasure. In fact, He wants you to have even a deeper pleasure that is longer lasting than just pleasures of, for example, eating. Until you're stuffed and then you can't eat anymore. If a person tells you to eat more, you feel, you feel nauseous. Like you, you want to puke in, in the face of that person, right? You can't eat anymore. Because why? They're limited to this physical realm. But the pleasures of seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not like that. Then even a concept like death or being killed can become sweet. Like who? A person like Ali and Akbar, the son of Imam Hussain because he was seeking towards his creator, even death and being slaughtered for the sake of Allah became ahla min an asad. Became more sweet than honey for him. Because of what? Because the pleasures that you find in seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't be compared to nothing else, dear brothers and sisters. So if we don't understand this, unfortunately, we're going to lose a part of our own reality and our own existence. And that's the reality of why we were created. You see, when in the Prophet sallallahu in a narration, he states, Man arafa nafsa faqad arafa rabba, the one who knows himself surely knows his Lord, is because of what? Because a part of your reality as a human being is not limited to this physical realm. And if you forget that part, you can never satisfy your needs in this world. That's like a person forgetting that he's thirsty, for example. Sooner or later, you're going to hit the consequences, they're going to hit you in the face. If you're not drinking water. But a person who sees this need and he understands the reality of himself being more than this, just, just this physical realm, he can actually seek towards his Creator and he can fulfill his needs and make sure that the needs are satisfied as well. Or else you can't. So when we are saying that you should seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not that you're going to sacrifice something or, yeah, you're going to sacrifice something for the sake of a greater good. Not just you're going to be left with nothing. All the pleasures that you're looking for. That's why one of our greatest scholars, the teacher of Allama Tawatawa, sorry, the student of Allama Tawatawa, Rahmatullah Ali, he said something beautiful. He said, everything that the youth are looking for in following their worldly desires and pleasures lies within doing tark of these things, basically staying away from these worldly pleasures and desires. Because that's the true pleasure. Staying away from the superficial so you can have the longer lasting. Well, they're not compatible with each other. A person who's used to being entertained from other individuals, in other words, he's controlled by his environment. How can that person sit and think for himself, for example? He's given his brains out to everybody else. He's used to it. They're not compatible, these two things. The same applies when it comes to pleasures. Deep pleasures are not always compatible with what? Superficial pleasures. So seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not sacrificing pleasure. In fact, you're doing this, uh, something even greater than that. You're seeking that deep pleasure which lies beneath the surface, which is longer lasting and in quality or even much better. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He describes the hereafter, He says, It's better and longer lasting. It's better and longer lasting. The two qualities that we are looking for when we are looking towards pleasures. And he describes that when it comes to the Akhirah. In a narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa the priest of Sayyidah Salawat. Oh, 
He said, Hubbullah narun la yamurru ala shay'in illa ihtarafa. The love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a fire. It doesn't pass anything except that it burns it. In other words, it spreads as well. So we shouldn't settle with less or settle with worldly affairs when we know this is the consequences of seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That everything we would be looking for, we would get even more than that. Then why settle with less as individuals? Why? That's, that's not even reasonable to do that as a human being. In another narration, or oh, sorry, it's a verse from the Holy Quran, he even explains Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why people, they face sadness and grief when they're not seeking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a promise and a universal law which he explains about in the Holy Quran. He said, مَنْ عَرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْتِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً لَنْكَ A person would have a miserable life if he doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because he's the source of, every, or source of everything. It's a universal law which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us that promise in the Holy Quran. In other words, we cannot just take this as a discussion which is superficial. No, it's not important of holding any importance. No, that's not the case. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully explains it. He said, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ Don't be amongst the people that because they forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they forgot themselves as well. Forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equal to forget, forgetting yourself. Why? Because the reality is you are creation of Allah. You are linked to the Creator. You're nothing but a continuation of the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you forget this source, you will forget yourself as well. A huge part of your reality. Which is not limited to this physical realm. That's why it's important and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes on this, on this issue. That you understand the reality of yourself. So what's the last subject before we talk about the conditions of your practice being accepted, inshallah, which would be tomorrow's topic. How can we know that we are actually seeking towards our Creator? That's an important discussion. What is it? What kind of signs do we have as individuals? So we know that, look, when I'm seeking closeness to Allah, to Allah, when I'm putting in an effort to seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm actually becoming closer to God. What is the signs of that? How can we know that? Because if you look at throughout history, you find that there were individuals that were thinking that they were seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they weren't. The example that came from one of the questions yesterday, you will find people amongst ISIS, they're thinking they're seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by killing other individuals, right? Let me give you an example from the Islamic history. There's just like these people from Daesh, like ISIS. When 30,000 people, they met up on Karbala, it is written in history, Kullu yataqarrabu biddamih. They thought they were seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by killing Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. They had the intention of seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by killing Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So what is the sign? How do we know if our closeness is a reality or is it false? It's not just something that we are thinking of telling ourselves I'm seeking closeness to my Lord. But in reality we're becoming the worst Satan in this world. What is the sign of that? In a dua. The, the Ahlul Bayt wasalam, they gave us the answer in a beautiful dua. Allahumma inni ataqarrabu ilayka bi Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. One of the most important signs if you want to know whether you're seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at whether your character is similar to the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi in Ahlul Bayt. If you act in accordance to their values or the values that we have from Ahlul Bayt. Because there's two types or two ways to seek perfection. The first way is to what? That you read the Quran, the ahadith that we have, understand the concepts and you try to implement it. The other way is to, that you find some role models that are considered to be perfect individuals and you imitate them. In other words, you live in accordance to how they lived. Being a Shia is exactly that type of 
following or seeking perfection. As Shia to man shaya aliyan. A Shia is the one who follows the footstep of Ali ibn Abi Talib We're not talking about the name of Ali. We're not talking about where he was born, how old he, he were when he became a Shaheed. Who was his mother? Who was his father? The children of Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib. They're all important and good to know as well. We're talking about the character of Ali ibn Abi Talib If you're similar to Ali ibn Abi Talib in his character, in the way he will conduct himself in a community or in a society. If you know how Ali ibn Abi Talib if he lived in Stockholm in Sweden today with us, how he would act based on what values and principles he would deal with his community, he would take up his responsibility. Then if you live in accordance to that, then you know that you're seeking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another narration, we have about seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَعْلَمْ حُبَّنَا فَلْيَمْتَحِنْ قَلْبَهُ فَإِنْ شَارَكَ فِي حُبِّنَا حُبَّ عَدُوِّنَا فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا وَلَسْنَا مِنْهُمْ And that's the other side of it. Loving Ahl al-Bayt is one side of it. Having the hatred for people that what? Were enemies of Ahl al-Bayt is the other side of it. It's two sides of the same coin, dear brothers and sisters. Sometimes we're Salmun Lakum. Salmun Lakum means what? That we are fine with Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa sallam. We're fine with Ahlul Bayt. Well, what about the people that follow Ahlul Bayt? Salmun Liman Salamakum, which is written in Ashur, Ziyara Ashura. In other words, if you want to see closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not only being the character of Ali ibn Abi Talib, but make sure that you preserve your what? Your responsibility and your relationship to other mu'mineen in your community as well. There's two types of wulaya, dear brothers and sisters. The first one is the vertical one. The other one is the horizontal one. In other words, you have a responsibility towards other mu'mineen. You cannot be like, I have a good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the believers in my community, they hate me and I hate them. We have no such thing. Salmun liman salamakum. And then the other example which we mentioned, the hadith from, which were that if a person he wants to see whether he has the hope of Ahlul Bayt in his heart, he should examine his heart. If he sees that in his heart, he both have, he associate the hope that he has for Ahlul Bayt with the hope that he has for the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. In other words, he has some love for the enemies of Ahlul Bayt as well. فَلَسْنَا مِنْهُ He's not amongst us, we're not from that person. In other words, he has nothing to do with us. He can claim that he's a follower of Ahlul Bayt, but he's not. So both having a good relationship to the believers in the community, and when I'm saying believers, it starts with your family. It starts with your close relatives. If you think of a community, what, you can be good with strangers? But not your family members. It starts with your family members and then the rest of the community. And when I'm saying the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, some people they think I have a tendency to what? Talk about historical figures, personalities who lived 1400 years ago. And then with Imam Sadiq, Ziyarah Ashura, when he's saying, Harbun liman harabakum, I wage war against the people that wage war against you. That means that we should go towards people, certain in the historical figures' graves. And we should kick their graves and spit on their graves. We should talk bad about them, curse them. No. Why? Ziyara Ashura explains. وَأَدْبَاءَهِمْ وَأَشْنَاءَهِمْ The followers and the believers in those values that the, these people they hold. It's not about historical figures, no. If you ha have a hatred for Shimr or Yazid or Umar ibn Sa'd, look at the people that are similar, are similar to these individuals today. Is there a few of them? Yeah, there's a lot of them. If you have some sort of a peace treaty with such an individual, and you're not taking a stance against these individuals, then you can't become, say that I'm seeking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This fake understanding of seeking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if it's love, peace and harmony, and there will be no issues at all, 
That goes against the seerah of the Amma alayhim wasalam. You think Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wasalam were all about love? There were no hatred in his community, in his society? The majority of the civil wars that happened or occurred in the Islamic history was in the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Why? Because he was firm in his principles. When you are firm in your principles and you stand for justice, people that are being aggressors, people that are being unjust, people that are being oppressors, don't you think they're going to have an issue with you? Of course they are. If they don't, something you have a problem then. In other words, that means that you're not firm in your principles. If you don't have a standpoint when it comes to these oppressors around the world, and this is where the journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes political as well. Until this day, we talked about the individual responsibility. The responsibility you have as an individual. Here comes the responsibility that we have as an ummah. And that's political, dear brothers and sisters. And that is that if you want to be similar to Ahlul Bayt, they had enemies. They had people that didn't like them. And they fought and waged war against these enemies as well. And this is a conflict between values and ideas. I'm not saying it's supposed to be a physical war necessary. No, sometimes it's a soft war. It's a cultural war. There's the same war they're waging against Muslims in Europe today. And the cultural war that is not only limited to the concept of a family life, or that, that they're waging war against the family. It's not even because I'm a Muslim or dogmatic, I'm saying these things. You can find Westerners who will say exactly the same thing. There's a book that is written by a Canadian, he's a psychologist, which is called The War on the Family in the West. Read it. He will tell you exactly the same thing. Let alone the different, the foreign policy that these countries they hold. We, we have no opinion about these things. What's going on in Yemen? What's going on in Palestine? The oppression that the Zionists are imposing upon the Muslims? We have no opinion about these things? This is not a part of our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is. It is. It's a responsibility. You can't be quiet. You can't be a follower of Abu Abdullah salam. If Abu Abdullah salam, he's the scale or whether you're seeking closeness to Allah, in other words, if you're similar to his character, then you would know that being silent about these issues is not an opportunity for you anymore. Amir al-Mu'mineen weren't quiet about these things in, in his community or his society. He didn't stay quiet. Hence, people, they wage war against Amir al-Mu'mineen So the first sign of you becoming close to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or that your journey is on the right path, look at whether your character has become more like the character of Ahlul Bayt. But that's conditioned by you actually understanding and knowing about their character. Let me just give you one book that you can study. One book that you can study. It's not even that long. It's the book of Shaheed Mutahari where he talks about the, the polarization of the character of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Such a beautiful book where he explains his one aspect of his character, not all of his character, just one aspect of it. Try to read that and see whether you're similar and understand why following Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, in practice is one of the signs of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a beautiful book. So that was the first sign. What is the second sign when it comes to seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That we know that we're seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second sign, dear brothers and sisters, if that if you experience some sort of an existential dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all your affairs, that's another sign that you're seeking closeness to God. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu antum al fuqara wa huwa al ghaniyu al hamid. Oh, you who believe, you have nothing but what? Poverty. He's not talking about that your money, your pockets are empty. He's talking about what? The poverty of existence. Basically, you're dependent on your Lord in all your affairs. When you experience that with feelings and your understanding is everything I have is from my Creator and you start looking and perceiving things like that, you're seeking towards your Creator as well. When your income comes from your workplace, 
oh, it's my efforts, right? If you see it from yourself, it's in contrast to Tawheed. If you see it as risk from your Creator, if you see the blessing that you're blessed with children, the blessing that you're blessed with a good family, caring family, a wife or husband, if you see all of these things as a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you perceive it as blessings from God, and you understand all of these things as being dependent on the Creator, then slowly you're seeking towards your Creator. Because that feeling of being dependent, when you seek towards Allah, the strengthens. What is the difference? When we here on this planet Earth, when we are seeing the light, for example, that the sun provides for human beings, it's quite a lot, right? Being on planet Earth, it's quite a lot. Imagine being close to the sun then. Imagine being close to the sun. When you're seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that feeling of being dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes even stronger. The closer you come, the more you understand how dependent of God you are. So that's the second sign, dear brothers and sisters. If you want to see whether you are becoming closer to Allah, whether you're closing, to, you're closing up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a spiritual journey towards the Creator, look at whether you're feeling dependent. Or no, you see everything from yourself. The knowledge I have is from me. I've studied. I've read the books. It's not blessings from Allah. That's kuf. You're associating yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, you're not understanding where the source of all of these things. If it's your knowledge, when you fall from the bicycle and your head hits the ground, for example, you keep, it, keep your knowledge for yourself. How come you forget it? It's yours. You should keep it. When you pass away, keep your car with you. When you pass away, keep your money with you. Keep your family with you, your house with you. None of these things is going to be kept. Why? It's, it doesn't belong to you, basically. That's the second sign, dear brothers and sisters. Whether we understand or we perceive things around us as being our, our own things, and we're the malik al-haqiqi of these things, the true owner of these things, or whether no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave it to us for a certain amount of period. So when we want to seek closeness to Allah, dear brothers and sisters, if we want to understand whether we are actually are seeking closeness to Allah, first thing, look at whether your character has become similar to Ahlul Bayt's character. If that's the case, show your gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that means that your journey is on the right path. Second, when you feel that you're becoming more dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's another sign. Put those two together and inshallah that you'll be on your journey towards the Creator. Tomorrow inshallah we're going to discuss about the different conditions that exist for our actions or practice to be accepted. Because there's different conditions. A lot of people, they think that your practice, as long as you do it correctly, then it's accepted. That's not always the case. So tomorrow we're going to discuss the, the, the acceptance of actions. And then inshallah for the rest of the nights, we're going to discuss some of the things that we should look out for on our journey path and journey towards the Creator. Which is the things that deviate people from that path. So if, it's not, if there's not any, not any questions, I think that will be it for this thing. Yeah?